and expose them so the news media didn't pick up on it. I mean, it's just like what they've done with Ron Paul. Uh, they got caught saying, let's dress up like Klan members to go out and make him look bad. Absolutely. And and uh, I, I, I have to assume that they were present here yesterday because uh, we had a conversation with one individual who just did not seem to belong here. <laughs> and, uh, you can usually spot them. Uh, they, 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 they try to look like they're one of the occupiers, but uh, they sort of stand out like a sore thumb. Well, shifting gears out of that area, uh, let's quickly, because I know you've got to go here in a moment. We've got a reporter coming in as well. Uh, let's get into uh, the latest on Iran from your intel. And then this deadlock convention, talk of Jeb Bush coming in as the savior on the white horse and the creepiness uh, of uh, Obama hosting George H. Bush and Jeb at the White House in a closed door meeting. Uh, what's your intel there from Capitol Hill on that? Well, it's, it's, you know, we still hear the, the sabers being rattled about Iran. There's a report today, another one out of uh, Israel, that Israel is intent on hitting them in May. Uh, of course, that's uh, 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 in the middle of the campaign season here. So you, you never can tell what is real and what is not real from uh, especially the Israelis because they, they try to, uh, you know, pump this stuff up uh, as a propaganda thing, probably to scare the Iranians. Now, on the, uh, I thought it was also interesting that, that this administration apparently doesn't speak with one voice on a lot of these Middle East issues, with Vice President Biden saying he cautioned against the raid on uh, that supposedly killed bin Laden in Pakistan. He said, look, Mr. President, we don't know who's in that, that particular building. So uh, it seems like Biden, of all people, is now exercising some sort of adult uh, responsibilities in this administration. Uh, by saying he, he's come out and admitted, he said, I, I said, look, uh, uh, Panetta, who was at the CIA then, he's saying, look, the line's there. But he said, as far as I'm concerned, I think we need more proof. Uh, well, now we so know it was a CIA doctor that led them there. Then the helicopter right. blows up when it's lifting off. Then the rest of the SEALs that know about it and seem till six get sardine into a helicopter and it blows up. They bury him at sea. You can see all the scripting of this. This is as phony as a three dollar bill. Right, and I, I think the more that uh, Joe Biden starts uh, keeps talking, because we know that he, he has this tendency to speak when he's not supposed to say anything, I think the more this happens, uh, we may not see Joe Biden on the ticket um, uh, come November. What's this we hear about Hillary could be on the ticket or maybe even run against Obama? Right, and she, of course, has said, she, of course, has said that she will not serve a uh, a second, uh, you know, the Secretary of State in a second term. She may be floating that as a trial balloon as well. Now, uh, let's uh, shift into the issue of uh, Jeb Bush and his little visit to meet with Obama. Yeah, that was, uh, that was this past um, uh, uh, Friday. There was a very interesting meeting. Uh, now, Obama was doing a fundraiser at the Mandarin Oriental Hotel, which is about a five-and-a-half-star hotel, here in Washington, he leaves the fundraiser, runs up to the White House to uh, have a, a chat with old man Bush, H.W., and Jeb in the Oval Office. That's the second time that these two individuals have shown up, sort of unexpected, for what was called a courtesy call. Uh, there was another meeting like that in November of '09. But as anyone who's covered Washington politics and in the White House for a number of years knows, you just can't call, even if you're the ex-president, you just can't call up because they've got a tight schedule the president. And uh, normally uh, when you see ex-presidents go into the Oval Office, it's usually this, a state funeral for some uh, past president who died or some some major function. But here's twice now where old man Bush and Jeb have uh, just uh, called up and, and, you know, they're, yeah, come on over. We'll drop everything we're doing. And it's always now, these two. It's, it's, it's not, he's not there with George Walker Bush, with George H.W., 41. It's right. not Marvin. It's not any of the others. It's always right. these two. Absolutely. And the, the, the word that's bubbling under the surface here, and of course, we don't know what's going to happen with the primary today in Florida. Uh, we were told that Romney was surging in South Carolina, and of course, Gingrich uh, uh, beat him handily. Uh, but there's a lot of word here uh, from different uh, quarters that um, Gingrich is not dropping out. Uh, Certainly, Ron Paul is not dropping out. Santorum hasn't given any indication he's dropping out. We may go to Tampa with a uh, with no one having a majority of the delegates. 
<laughs> Therefore, we could have a deadlock convention. Jeb could come in as the white knight in shiny armor and pick up the gauntlet and, um, and take the nomination. And we know the Republicans last year, well, I guess now it's a year and a half ago, it was late 2010, they changed the rules to make a broker convention more easy. That's right. Florida's a winner-take-all, but all the states after this, caucuses and primaries, of the delegates are awarded proportionately. We saw that up till now with New Hampshire uh, and South Carolina. Apparently, Romney picked up a couple of delegates in South Carolina because he won one of the congressional districts. So from after Florida, they're all awarded proportionately. And with Ingrich, Santorum, and Ron Paul staying in, we could see no candidate having a majority of delegates, which would be perfect for a Jeb Bush. Remember, the, the convention is in Tampa, Florida, and we know how Jeb runs the show in Florida. He did it in 2000, certainly, with the, uh, with the uh, election there. WayneMadsenReport.com is where folks can learn more of your great investigative work. Uh, in closing, uh, Wayne, um, in other areas uh, of uh, politics, why do you think the Republican establishment is turning against Genrich? I don't like Genrich. He is a very nasty man. He is for carbon taxes. He is a flip-flopper. Uh, uh, but I think the system's going against him because they know that kind of like Nixon, he would try to be president, and they want a weak puppet like Obama or Romney. Of course, they're scared of Paul because he's a constitutionalist and against everything they stand for. But I think they're more and more going after Genrich and exposing his record to destroy him with libertarians and conservatives. They can do the same thing with Mitt Romney. I mean, offshore Cayman accounts, carbon taxes, wrote Obamacare. But the Republican establishment's okay with that. They're turning against Genrich. Uh, do you agree with my summation? Can you add any, or do you disagree, or do you can you add any caveats to why the Republican establishment is going after Genrich? Is it that Pelosi says she's got this dirt and they know what it is, uh, that she says she can destroy him? Why are they going after Genrich? Well, Pelosi was supposedly had dirt on Obama and never used it. I don't know how much uh, what she says we can believe, but I'll tell you what one thing Genrich did is he violated a cardinal sin when he bought that documentary, and I saw that documentary about Romney and how he would uh, close factories and uh, with Bain Capital moving in, selling all the, uh, getting rid of the jobs and selling all the plant equipment, that that was hard hitting and that hurt Romney. And but you, uh, you you know when you understand that that documentary was just showing the vulture and vampire capitalism practiced by people like Romney. You know, let's face it, of course, Gingrich also made a uh, handsome salary as a lobbyist for Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, but but uh, lobbying here in Washington is everybody does it, but what you don't have normally in this town is somebody like a Romney, who is a multi-billionaire, <clears throat> who gets all these investments from uh, shady people in Latin America to set up Bain Capital, and uh, they just destroy, you know, entire towns uh, in, in the United States. And I think when Gingrich highlighted that, Gingrich was basically committing a very mortal sin against the Republican Party is we don't talk about how we make our money because we are Wall Street. We are the one percenters. So when Gingrich kind of attacked the one percenters, I think... Uh, uh, they said, look, this guy, we can't have him even anywhere close to the White House because he can't be trusted to carry out our agenda. No, I agree with you. Uh, and, and, and that's the big secret to globalism is they use government to shut down their competition. Uh, they come in and destroy companies and sell them off. Uh, and they, they get tax incentives to move offshore. Notice none of these Republicans except Ron Paul will even point that out. That I mean, look at the last head of Bain Capital is replacing Daly at the White House. I mean, it's it's all one disgusting crew. Absolutely, and uh, I think uh, uh, as I said, uh, Gingrich by highlighting Bain Capital and how these people do business, I think the Republican uh, hierarchy said, "Wait a minute," and uh, who knows what was spoken about uh, at uh, the White House, but later that night. Old man Bush, Jeb, and Obama were all at the Alfalfa Club dinner here in Washington, and apparently the Alfalfa Club 
uh, as kind of a joke, nominated Jeb Bush to be their candidate for president. Now, a joke aside, I think there was probably much more to that than meets the eye. Well, we're going to find out soon. Wayne Madsen, thank you so much for the time. Okay, good to be with you. All right, great talking to him out there. All right, uh, we're going to go to break and come back with our very own Darren McBreen looking at something we can do something about, aspartame. It's not just in soft drinks. It's not just in bubble gum. It's not just in sweeteners. It's being added to everything. We'll be right back. It's InfoWars Nightly News. Yeah, I'm signing these evil 1776 flags. Doesn't get any more out of control than that, ladies and gentlemen. It's pretty un-American what we're doing here at InfoWars.com. I mean, not only are we promoting liberty, but we're selling 1776 flags. Now that is Al-Qaeda. What's up with these sorry politicians? Lots of bark. When it's showtime, whimpering like little shih tzus. You want big cuts. Ron Paul's been screaming it for years. Budget crisis, no problem. Cut a trillion bucks year one. That's trillion with a T. Department of Education, gone. Interior, energy, HUD, commerce, gone. Later bureaucrats. That's how Ron Paul rolls. Want to drain the swamp? Ron Paul, do it. I'm Ron Paul, and I approve this message. Now, in a moment, we're going to go to Darren McBreen uh, dealing with aspartame, this uh, military chemical weapon that's been in our uh, food since 1981. But before we get to that, the guys were able to dig it up. And, and I've noticed that the Sunday Times of London that originally wrote the article pulled their story years after it was up. Uh, and also the uh, ABC News, and we're going to do a whole report on this in the next few days because we're going to dig up the old screenshots we've got, they changed their headline that they're trying to help the poor. But there's the PrisonPlanet.com article from a few years ago. Secretive Rich Cabal met to discuss population control. Now, the actual headline uh, from the Sunday Times was Rich Meat to Discuss Overpopulation in New York. And they're just pulling it. They let a reporter in, Oprah Winfrey, Ted Turner, Bill Gates, Warren Buffett. They were all there. And previously, the ABC News article said all this, but they actually cut it out. Why? Because Bill Gates is a sponsor of ABC News and ABC uh, blog. Uh, and again, George Soros, all of them were there obsessed with their philanthropy to make sure you take all these vaccines and shots. Uh, in, in fact, guys, did you find the Prison Planet version where we did actually save uh, part of the Sunday Times? You know, we only put a blurb there, but we have the actual headline. Uh, go back and type in that original headline that actually led you to our article. Uh, go back to the Google search, the NSA search. We'll show people. Hit enter on that. Uh, yeah. Uh, billionaire club in bid to curb overpopulation. That's it. And that's our forum. And then watch what happens when you link on it. It takes you to the Sunday Times. And now they've removed it. I actually went and registered Trying to see this today? Gone. Gone. But, again, they want you to register now. But thank God we were able to save it. So if you type in billionaire club in bid to curb overpopulation, uh, we only put a blurb up to document it was there. Uh, Global Research actually has the whole thing. In fact, put in billionaire club in bid to curb overpopulation and then put in globalresearch.ca after it. They actually have the whole thing. Again, we just show you our own research, you know, what, what, what we do here. It's all transparent. And you read it, and at the end they say, well, we don't want to say we're an alternative global government. We're just trying to help the global